A top Kyrgyz official warned of the Central Asian nation's grim prospects a few weeks before the Sri Lankan president fled the country amid protests over its debt-laden economy's default and financial calamity. We must always remember the need to pay our national debt, Kyrgyzstan's cabinet chairman Akhilbek Japarov said at a late June parliamentary session. Kyrgyzstan, like Sri Lanka, has a growing national debt and borrowed billions from China's Export-Import Bank over the past decade for infrastructure projects under Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative BRI, the project of the century. According to the foreign ministry, Kyrgyzstan owes $5.1 billion (42%) to Beijing. Bishkek's enormous Chinese loan-backed projects have yet to prosper in a sinking economy. This raises concerns that the country will be unable to repay its debt or interest. The nation may lose significant assets if it defaults. If we don't pay, China's Export-Import Bank can take over projects. Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and others discussed this, Japarov said. God cannot support us. Unify for independence. China confronts its first overseas debt crisis as sovereign debt problems emerge in numerous BRI countries An examination of how Chinese credit has increased economic strains on vulnerable governments. There's no doubt that the Chinese Ministry of Finance and Central Bank are looking at their dashboards and their red lights are going out right now. Bradley Parks, executive director of the Aid Data Lab at William & Mary in Virginia, told RFE, RL. BRI, launched in 2013 by Beijing as the largest infrastructure program by a single country, has left it with a list of risky debtors around the world, including Argentina, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, Venezuela, Zambia, and Iran, that hope to take advantage of the surge in Chinese overseas lending but now face a debt crisis the World Bank has warned could lead to a series of defaults. China is at an inflection point after nearly 10 years of unregulated BRI credit, rising inflation, oil prices, and tightening global financial conditions due to the Ukraine crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. Beijing may cut its flagship attempt. China is more apprehensive about not being able to get paid back, Natixis Asia-Pacific chief economist Alicia Garcia Herrero told RFE, RL. China is likewise struggling in lending less to risky countries. BRI started anew. Rising Debt According to Fudan University's Green Finance and Development Center, China has loaned $932 billion since the BRI's founding. BRI headwinds grew before the debt crisis. In 2020 and 2021, Chinese loans that required negotiation increased to $52 billion, according to New York-based Rhodium Group. A group of senior economists reported in April that 60% of Chinese loans flow to financially troubled countries, up from 5% in 2010. The Aid Data Lab at William & Mary showed that 35% of BRI infrastructure projects have major implementation concerns. Pakistan, Belarus, Egypt, Mongolia, Turkey, and Sri Lanka have received tens of billions of dollars in rescue loans from Beijing to avert default. Right now is pivotal. China is reinventing BRI due to massive debt, Rhodium Group senior research analyst Matthew Minji told RFE, RL. In July, the Green Finance and Development Center claimed that the BRI is becoming more risk-averse, with new investment in Russia, a BRI pillar decreasing to zero in the first half of 2022 and involvement in Pakistan falling by 56%. In the first half of 2022, Saudi Arabia received 80% of China's oil and gas investments and 66% of its building contracts. Christoph Nedipal Wong, the report's director, told RFE RL that resource-backed investments offer a clearer route for Chinese institutions to repay. Due to the financial crisis, a slowing global economy, and Beijing's prudence, Minji thinks China will need new answers. Sri Lanka defaulted despite rescue loans. He questions Beijing's BRI debt resolution cooperation with multilateral institutions. Postpone, 
reorganize and give debtors time to figure things out, Minji says. China dislikes refinancing and struggles with multilateral, corporate, and public bilateral creditors. Thus, China must assess its tools. Bishkek Islamabad, Chinese loans alone don't cause defaults. Sri Lanka owes $5 billion to China. However, Beijing's support to the South Asian country has been controversial, with critics charging that projected credit has been granted at excessive rates and money from the surplus of foreign borrowing is being squandered amid corruption suspicions. Kyrgyzstan and Pakistan BRI projects received similar complaints. With 220 million people in the $62 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, Pakistan receives the largest BRI money, CPEC. Sri Lanka and Pakistan's BRI priority Gwadar port projects have been questioned. BRI implementation has strained Beijing Islamabad relations. To avert default, a consortium of Chinese state banks borrowed Pakistan $2.3 billion in late June. Beijing has reportedly requested Islamabad to renew a 2019 loan deal with the IMF, which has provided half of the $6 billion payment. On August 1, Pakistani Finance Minister Mifta Ismail told Bloomberg that progress had been made on the loan, which could prevent a default. However, analysts say Islamabad's finances remain strained, and Minji said Pakistan is still a leading domino to fall after Sri Lanka amid the debt crisis and potential defaults. President Sadir Japarov has committed not to delay foreign debt repayment for one hour and highlighted the necessity to pay China. Japarov suggested Chinese companies buy the Jetum 2 iron ore mine if Russia didn't pay China in 2021. Japarov has stated that the mine will be developed locally. Still, other Chinese financed projects like the Bishkek thermal power plant could be under external supervision if Kyrgyzstan fails to meet its obligations. Navigating a new crisis, analysts worry about China's financial crisis in experience. Paris Club sovereign debt restructuring spans 60 years. It has hundreds of IMF agreements. The BRI made China a large creditor in the last two decades, although it is not a Paris Club member. Aid Data's Parks says that little is known about Beijing's approach as an important creditor in a time of growing distress but that China has frustrated restructuring efforts, which often involve compromises and pain for both borrowers and lenders and require them to work with other international creditors owed debts from the same countries. Every successful sovereign debt restructuring has happened when all creditors have taken a haircut and structured agreements such that no one creditor faces a disproportionate cost, Parks said. China's restructuring precedent, China's debt restructuring plan for Sri Lanka, Zambia, Laos, Cambodia, and Ethiopia will be announced. China granted Zambia debt relief on July 30 enabling an IMF rescue and establishing a precedent for how Beijing will handle other lenders under the G20's common framework for debt management. BRI cannot sustain itself as first intended, but we shouldn't underestimate the Chinese," Parks added. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.